Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing the Line. We're going to be taking a look at this story from the Daily Mail today on Audrey Hale, the trans school shooter from Nashville who went into a Nashville school back in March and shot and killed six innocent people, including several children. The shooter was quickly dispatched by police, very proactively by police, in a short amount of time that shooter was taken down. And we have little to no information about why this occurred, why this person decided they went into that, that should go into that school and do those horrendous crimes, the things that they did. We have now found out that the uh, manifesto has been leaked and it has been given to us by Stephen Crowder from Louder with Crowder, uh, exclusively from them. They got their hands on it somehow and released it. Now, the media and propaganda machine that is controlled by someone, I don't know who, uh, the left, it seems to be overturning and trying to crush anything to do with this story right now. Stephen Crowder has um, had several strikes against him now, another one on YouTube. People have been calling him, um, saying that he's been giving out lies and false information and just about anything to discredit this information that he's given out because it turns out this trans school shooter is a, uh, I would say, a racist leftist with views ranging from hating their own skin color to hating uh, white privilege and uh, using a lot of choice words to be calling those people. I don't know how you um, think some four-year-old kids are despicable enough to go and shoot, but... This person was obviously mentally ill. Whatever their political uh, ideology, uh, ideology was or their affiliations were, this um, tragedy that unfolded, no one who suffered at the hands of this person really cares what their political views were at this point. They just want some closure. And now releasing this manifesto to the public has probably upset some of those people. I mean, I can understand that. But this information needs to be out there. It needs to be shown to people because the left was using this shooting as a political arm and a political ploy to take guns away from legal owners there in America. As every single shooting that happens over there, that is their end goal, is to disarm the population like they have done to a lot of other countries, including us here at home. In Australia, we were disarmed after one serious shooting uh, to a vast extent, but we still do have rights to have firearms, and we have several firearms ourselves. And... We seem to be losing those rights every day. Even over this shooting, they were talking about taking firearms off us here in Australia, even though this happened across the other side of the world. Uh, with rifles and guns that we can't possess normally here in Australia, you, there are ways to go and get semi-autos, but uh, the average Joe isn't going to be able to do that. Now... This story, the uh, motives for that person are bad enough. The news coming out of uh, Ladder with Crowder, uh, we kind of all saw this coming. Uh, we knew that the shooter had these kind of po uh, political ideologies. It was just the way they dressed, the way they were, the, the way they called themselves trans, uh, things that they'd posted on social media, stuff like that anyway. Now, this person um, obviously had mental illness. And I believe that was triggered and the response that they took, the things that they did, were pushed on them by this massive corporation of mainstream media and political lies and propaganda that is getting shoved down everyone's throat, scaring them into thinking that the world is ending in several different ways. They're thinking that white uh, privilege is a thing and that somehow that four-year-old children from a Catholic school uh, are the ones who should pay that price uh, for having those ideas. But um, I believe this is something very dangerous that's happening across the world and is only getting worse. The censorship and the absolute attack that's happened to Steven Crowder after releasing this information is something to behold. It truly is. The amount of um, fire coming his way at the moment and the way that the mainstream media is spinning things and that massive companies like Google and Meta are cracking down on him and trying to get him cancelled and taken off any platform that he's on is um, heartbreaking and is terrifying to see. We've saw this uh, over the last few years with things like uh, 
the jabs and the flu that was getting around over the last few years, anything to do with lockdowns. We've been seeing it with the Palestine-Israel conflict, which we saw it the other day with uh, fake news getting released about a hospital bombing, and a lot of that news still has not been corrected by the mainstream media. It has not been retracted. They are still running with the story that a hospital was bombed and up to 500 people were killed by the Israelis where none of that actually happened. Turns out that the rocket fired was from Hamas and fell out of the sky and landed in a car park at the front of the hospital, wounding some people, maybe killing a few others, but it definitely did not level the hospital. It did not destroy the hospital beyond repair. It didn't, you know, any time a hospital is getting bombed, even in the car park, it is a tragedy. But when you do it yourself, uh, kind of hard to um, blame Israel for that when you're the ones firing the rockets. But the mainstream media and Google and YouTube, Meta, things like that, Instagram even, have um, have taken it upon themselves that they are the arbiters of free speech and they are the arbiters of truth and that anything they say goes and they are coming out and attacking Stephen Crowder with full force. We'll get into this little bit of a story here from the Daily Mail about the Nashville uh, Shooters Manifesto and then we'll go on from there. Daily Mail, Nashville school shooter Audrey Hale's manifesto leaked trans murderer vowed to kill privileged white kids at a Covenant school. The manifesto believed to have been written by trans Nashville Catholic school shooter Audrey Hale's become public and reveals her intention to kill white privileged kids before being shot dead by police. The manifesto has been shrouded in secrecy since the shooting on March 27th. This year, Nashville PD has yet to release it despite multiple media requests and the issue is now subject of a lawsuit. The media controversially... Uh, co- on Monday, the controversial podcast host Stephen Crowder published photographs of three pages of it, which he says his reports have retain, obtained from a detective at the scene. Police source told Fox 17 that documents were authentic and Freddie O'Connell, the new mayor of Nashville, said he is concerned and asked that the city's top attorney launch an investigation into the leaked photos. Hale's parents said that they did not, uh, they had not seen them before and did not know if they were real. The purport of... Uh, uh, the purport of the sh- uh, show, Hale's planned of the day, began with a breakfast at home, including lunch, 10-minute final video, which has not yet been made public. Hale was concerned about how long the rampage would last, but wanted to annihilate what she described as crackers and F-words for uh, gay people. I'm just not going to say that here on YouTube. I don't mind saying it. I just don't want to be um, struck, especially with what's going on about this um about this story at the moment before being killed herself. She was furious about what she uh, believed and right white privilege fancy uh, kids at a fancy private school despite previously attending the same school herself you see Hale there firearm advocates and police unions wanted Hale's manifesto released but the school and the parents of the victim argue the writing should not be released to avoid potential copycats and allow for closure David Rabin, who was uh, representing Hale's parents, said they have not seen the documents before. He added that it would be inappropriate for offered a comment on the photos given that the pending lawsuit Metro Nashville Police Department said they had launched an inquiry. The MMPD is a communication with the Metro Department of Law and its investigation began this morning continues into the dissemination of three photographs and writings during an online discussion about the Covenant School. The photographs were, are not MMPD crime scene images. Now, um, just coming out there and saying that they would not be launching an investigation into these three images Stephen Crowder has released if they were not real. So the images are obviously real. They have been uh, reported to be real by several different uh, authorities now as the time of filming this. And um, I doubt they would be going after him. They would just be saying that it's not true. They're fake. It's got nothing to do with any of this. You're just lying. Uh, but no, they're not saying that. They're just um, trying to start covering their asses. Now, this story has gained that much momentum that the mainstream media has actually had to start reporting on this. And the massive big tech companies like Meta and Facebook, Facebook things like that, and YouTube have started to crack down on Stephen Crowder himself. He's uh, posted on Twitter that he is being censored. Things like the uh, trying to Google anything about the manifesto and leaking of the time of the incident has... Uh, come up with a few red flags and uh, walls where Google does this thing where they say that a lot of information is changing on the subject and we can't give you an answer right now. So they redirect you to some other form of propaganda that they have all lined up about it. Have a look at Stephen Crowder's Twitter here. Uh, This is a new update here just five hours ago of filming this. Um, Hi, Stephen Crowder. We want to let you know that reviewed your content. This is from YouTube itself, his YouTube channel. 
uh, and it's violated the criminal organization policy. We know you may not have realized this violation. The policies are not applying the strike to your channel. However, you, we have removed the following content from YouTube. His podcast uh, episode where Nashville School Should Have Manifested was leaked. So the entire episode has been taken down and uh, said that it is, um, what is it, violent criminal organizations policy. A policy says here, Content that glorifies vi uh, violent criminal organizations or incites violent is not allowed on YouTube. Now, uh, they've attacked um, Stephen Crowder with everything they've pretty much had. That's why he is almost exclusively on Rumble now. And uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to places like Rumble and uh, X now, or it used to be Twitter. These are the only places that have any sort of freedom of speech on the internet anymore. I mean, Wikipedia is an absolute cesspool of leftist propaganda. So much so that Elon Musk recently just offered them a billion dollars to change Wikipedia to Dickipedia. Uh, unfortunately, they did not take him up on that. But um, it just goes to show you how the left has taken over every single platform that we have. The mainstream media, anywhere from CNN, even to Fox News now with kicking Tucker Carlson off because he was too edgy or something like that. Uh, everything has been taken over by the left and all the information that we get is spoon-fed to us through this lens that they are right and everything else is wrong. We saw all that over the... Uh, Blue over the last couple of years. We saw that with the most recent thing here in Australia was the voice to parliament. We saw that they were saying that 80% of people are voting yes and 80% of um, Aboriginal Indigenous people were voting yes. And um, they thought it was going to be a big resounding yes. So the Australians uh, were given a referendum and we resoundingly voted no to that referendum, no to the voice to parliament. Thank God, because Everything uh, coming from the media, everything coming from any places like Facebook uh, or things like that were pushing the yes vote and they were pushing the yes campaign. I don't think I ever saw one ad for the no campaign on any of my um, online searching or anything like that. The only time I ever saw a no campaign ad was in town when, uh, where I live, uh, about 45 minutes away. I go there and there was a couple of no pamphlets up and no uh, no flyers up around the place, but that was about it. And we're in a quite rural place and that's kind of be, to be expected. But when you go online, you're only seeing one side of the coin. And I wonder whether that has anything to do with what Google was promoting and um, what things like Meta were promoting as well. Because if you go on Facebook, the only thing you ever saw was pro yes campaign stuff. And uh, recently, Tim Poole from Timcast did a uh, conversa had a conversation with a very intelligent man, Dr. Epstein, uh, not to be confused with Epstein, but Dr. Epstein, I believe his name was, uh, about the bias that Twitter, Google, YouTube, all those things exude. They change people's opinion on the little ads and things that they give them. Now... This gentleman is doing the research where it seems to be coming out that they could sway up to like 60,000 votes in an election or something like that. They did sway up to like 60,000 votes in elections. And that's, I believe that was a number that was, um, go and watch a full episode on uh, Timcast uh, on YouTube there. But it was a very terrifying uh, conversation to be having because the amount of power that YouTube, Google, uh, massive companies like that, even X with um, Elon Musk at this point as well, the amount of power that they have to direct a narrative and to put out there the ideas and the propaganda that they want with no one to be able to correct them. At least with X, Elon's got the community notes, which is fantastic because anytime you see something that sounds a little off, you look at it and 10 minutes later, there'll be community notes on it. And I believe now that is coming up so that if uh, you will be notified if something that you've previously viewed or looked at has been uh, given a community note, so you'll be notified of um, that. So Anything that we've been given out as misinformation, like a lot of things from the Palestine-Israel conflict, they've been corrected by community notes. And a lot of that is very, very helpful to point out the truth, because I think that is what is under attack at the moment. The truth is under attack. Anytime someone says something truthful, I know it hurts a lot of feelings uh, to be told that there's only two genders. I know it hurts a lot of feelings to be told that uh, Hamas is a terrorist organization and they're killing uh, Jews 
because of a, their version of a cloud wizard. I know it hurts a lot of feelings to be told that a trans shooter going into a school and killing little children because they were white is a leftist problem and they are a leftist person and it's not the guns at that point. It is the ideology of the left and the brainwashing that has been put onto that person to make them think that that is their only recourse. Now, with having a small channel like mine, having uh, a small podcast like this, it is very hard to get any sort of information out there about anything that is mildly controversial. Anytime I see anything that I put out that is... Um, Says a few words like uh, the flu that we went through over the last couple of years, that one, uh, anything like that, it is immediately downranked and it is very hard to get out there. It's very hard to get subscribers. I'm only after a thousand subscribers just to say I've done it and that's about it. But anytime I go on to anything that's controlled other than X or Rumble, it is deranked horrendously. TikTok is the worst. Anything you put on TikTok is uh, immediately taken down just about and uh, flagged for some reason. They make up community guidelines. I then appeal it. A lot of the time it gets uh, reinstated, but then it just doesn't get views. If it's something that they are pushing with their agenda, it seems to get a lot of views. And um, I notice that with other content creators as well. Uh, some things, obviously, I don't expect I don't expect to get a lot of views on TikTok because I only basically use it as a information source to see what the left is thinking. And a few of the uh, right-wing pundits that are on there, um, well, before they get taken down or banned or censored, um, see what's going on there. But I don't expect anything more from the CCP. I don't expect anything less, sorry, from the CCP. I, I, that is what they're going to do. They are going to change their uh, change people's opinions slowly through things like TikTok and uh, pretend that they are the good guys when it turns out they are actually quite evil and they are messing with things that um, they should have no no play in. They shouldn't be playing with our elections. They shouldn't be getting away with the things that they do, but they are. Meta and Google are American propaganda tools. They are just as bad as TikTok is in chi with China, but they are American. So it's a lot easier for them to push things that they you know, are going on in their own country because no one's watching them. No one's ruling over them other than themselves. Google used to have the um, company policy. It was written in there somewhere. I think it was written up on the wall. They took it out of their policy saying, don't be evil. And that was around 2016, I think, when Donald Trump got voted in. I think they took it down after he was voted. I'm not too sure. But it was around that time they took it out. So I don't know what that has to say about Google, but like, wouldn't you even just leave it in posterity measures so you can go look no we've that's part of our policy don't be evil but they took it out google is interfering with things that are way above their pay grade they're interfering with elections they're interfering with wars they're interfering with people i mean facebook has a lot to answer for for the atrocities that happened in myanmar uh they were giving out phones with the only access to the internet was through facebook so they were given anything uh that was any news or anything like that was filtered through Facebook, which then the government of Myanmar and Burma paid for and showed them what they wanted them to see. They didn't show them the truth of the matter. They showed them what Facebook let them see. It's a lot like what is going on in Canada now, where Trudeau uh, decided he was going to start fining these companies for spreading misinformation uh, on things like uh, things like my channel or um, anything to do with probably Stephen Crowder was a perfect example. Uh, they anything to do with news, Google and Facebook decided we're not uh, we're not going to give it to them anymore. So it's very hard for anyone in Canada to get a differing opinion out without being shut down. And now that uh, Google and uh, Facebook have that much of a reach over a government, even though one that's corrupt and as communistic as, Ch uh, and it almost said China, that is Canada, one and the same. Uh, it's insane that these massive media organizations have that much dictatorship rule over everyday people. You may not see it. I mean, if you're watching channels like this, if you're watching shows like Stephen Crowder or Tim Cast or uh, Joe Rogan even, or anything like that, then you're obviously quite aware of the situation that we're going uh, going through at the moment, and you're quite aware of the war that is going with ongoing with information. 
and it is getting worse. And the only thing I can really see the way out of it is it gets to the point where nuclear exchange has happened and there is no one left to argue who's right and who's wrong, who's gay and who's straight, who's trans and who's uh, just a white supremacist sh school shooter. Those things are going to be seeming very trivial soon if we don't step back from the precipice of World War Three that we're on. There is that much misinformation going around at the moment. I don't see an end to it. With the upcoming election in the United States, it very well could be the last election. And it could be the start of the Civil War. It could be a uh, shot heard around the world, to say. Uh, it could be World War Three because if civil war kicks off in the United States, you can sh be sure as hell China is going to be walking into Taiwan the very next day and half of the Middle East will probably descend upon Israel within minutes and Russia will, if they haven't already, which I believe they probably have, won the war. If they haven't, they will just unleash all fiery hell upon the Ukrainian people and anyone that's in their way. I don't think uh, there's any way to get around this, but if Donald Trump wins the next election in the United States, uh, I hope he does, but I don't see that ending too well for the uh, Republican people. I don't see that ending too well for the Democrats. Uh, I see mass rights, either whether he wins or whether he loses. I mean, we saw January 6th. Uh, we're all the foul play there anyway. We won't go into that too long. Uh, but... We saw things like the church getting burnt down and uh, at the front of the White House and the White House grounds being breached, Donald Trump having to go into a bunker, but you don't hear about that every day. You only hear about January 6th. It just show, goes to show you the bias. But we saw those things happening, uh, especially after Black Lives Matter protests in the United States. I mean, we had CHOP, uh, where it was a, um autonomous zone built up in Portland. People were getting killed, gunned down in the streets. I mean, that's an everyday thing there in the states but we saw massive protests across the world and now we're seeing it here again in australia in england and america over the free palestine movement or we like to call it the um pro hamas movement because a lot of those people don't understand what they're actually protesting for uh they're just going there for their friends or because it's the hip thing to do because they think they're on the right side of history but i don't think chanting from the river to the sea palestine will be free uh is a very peaceful thing to be chanting. When you're talking about the whole genocide of, it was like 7 million Jews in Israel, the world is a match and it has already been lit on both ends and I don't know what's going to happen here. I, don't, I, I, am, I am shocked to see how quickly they went after Stephen Crowder here. I mean, you see anyone who comes out on the right, they are quickly jumped on by mainstream media and the left, and especially Google and YouTube now. But if his content is being taken down off of YouTube, like this here, uh, there's other reports that, uh, I'll see if I can find it here. Uh, yeah, his sensitive uh, content was flagged on X as well because the amount of people were reporting him for that, and even on X. Uh, you can see these are the... Um, Go to his profile and have a look here. Go to his um, account and have a look at the manifesto for yourself. Uh, I'm glad places like X and Rumble actually um, exist because if they didn't, we would be in a very single information source world at the moment. We would be... Um, we would not know where the truth is coming from and you wouldn't have any other perspective other than the left's perspective. So I'm a little worried that anyone sharing this story or if I put anything out about this story now is going to be uh, jumped on and descended upon by the left and mainstream media and things like big tech with Google and YouTube and Meta. Um, but it's a risk we're going to take because putting the truth out there is the most important thing. I think truth can heal a lot of wounds even though it hurts a lot of the time. Truth is very painful to some people. I do not understand why. It's cleansing to know the truth. I mean, there's nothing worse than finding out that you've been lied to by a loved one or a friend or something like that. So I don't understand why these people are so upset at us trying to show them the truth. I'm just trying to show them the truth. The evidence is there. Things that we know are factual. Things that we know are true. 
like over the last few years, all the jabs people were getting. We know they didn't work. We know now that they weren't tested. We know now that people didn't need to get them like they were. But consult a doctor before you listen to anything that's coming out of my mouth. Anything that the left puts out and starts throwing around so quickly, saying that this was a racist attack or this was a white supremacist attack and things like that, and then a little bit of quiet time later and a little bit of digging, you find out the truth of the matter, and it turns out this trans person was a leftist shill who was brainwashed and obviously very mentally ill because I don't care what side of the spectrum, political spectrum you are on, it you are not a sane person if you walk into a school and decide to shoot innocent babies and people. There's something wrong with people like that to the core. And she got what she deserved, uh, maybe a little too quick, if anything. But the government censoring things and mainstream media censoring it and big tech censoring it, we are getting attacked by these three major, major things at the moment. And it is very hard to get any truth out there. So anytime you see any lies, point them out. Anytime you see any misinformation, point it out. Whether it's helping the right or the left or whatever, it doesn't matter. Truth is the truth. You, you know, it it doesn't matter. I'd rather be, I'd rather know what I'm getting into than being lied to and think that I'm doing the right thing. Like I think a lot of these people on the left are. They've been sold this story and they've taken it. To the heart and it's like these people who protest for stop oil they believe they're doing the right thing these people who are going around smashing up paintings and gluing themselves to things they believe they're doing the right thing because they honestly do truly believe that the world is ending and they're going to die because the amount of propaganda and misinformation and lies put out there by these three massive massive figures the government mainstream media and big tech it's too much for some people. We saw this with Donald Trump getting elected. We saw, still see it today with uh, the jabs and things like that and lockdowns. People ignore what they did and ignore the truth because it's going to hurt them to realize that they were wrong and they were lied to for so long and they believe it. They took it hook, line and sinker. I know I've lost a few friends over it and I know a lot of other people have as well. But the most important thing is that we get the truth out there and whether the truth hurts us or not, whether it uh, hurts other people, it doesn't matter. People need to hear the truth. What do you guys think anyway? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget to leave a like, a share and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.